Here's a late 1960s GE AM solid state clock radio. They actually made a tube type version of this same set. And if you watch if you watch some of my older videos, you can find an example of such a radio. In fact, I have a solid state version of this that you've seen in an older video, but when I saw this one at the flea market for 6 bucks, I said, "Well, why not, you know?" Couldn't just let it sit there. Well, it appears that the clock is running. Let's try the radio and see what it does. Okay, we have noise that varies with the volume control, so we know our audio output stage is working. But no stations, so it doesn't work. Well, good. Because it wouldn't be any fun if it actually worked. Okay, so we'll now pull the back cover and see what we can find wrong with it. Okay, this is a Model C4410A. This label is just barely readable. And the date code is 5915, looks like G. So I think this is probably a 69 model. And here's the inside of the radio. The way you remove the chassis is pull the knobs off and then disengage that little clip with a screwdriver and then the chassis should just, should just slide out the back. Here's our schematic diagram. This is just a four transistor radio and from past experience these little GE's perform fairly well just to have only four transistors. We have a converter transistor, IF amp, detector diode, driver transistor, and audio output. Now this is a hot chassis set deri driven directly from the power line, no power transformer. And as you can see on the schematic, the AC comes in through a fusible resistor and then through the diode. And we have, looks like 64 volts for the audio output stage and 6.5 volts for the uh, other stages. So let's, let's prepare to test some voltages and see what we can find. I suspect our problem is going to be in the converter stage. Okay, checking our voltages, everything looks fairly in line. The only thing that's up a little bit is the collector voltage. The, the schematic says 6.4 volts. We're reading about oh, around 8.5. But I found a problem. We have this 1500 ohm resistor that connects between the emitter of the transistor and ground. As you can see there, 1500 ohms. Well, let me show you what we're reading. We're reading almost 10,000 ohms not good. That's way out of tolerance. And if I remember correctly, our GE Mickey Mouse radio that I also made a video of had this same problem, and I believe this same resistor was bad in that radio. I guess I'll need to go back and re-watch the video just to make sure, but for starters, we're going to replace this resistor with one of the uh, correct values. Okay, here's our old resistor out of circuit, now reading 7.6K. It's probably went down in value a little bit due to my heating it with a soldering iron, but it's still bad and needs to go. And here's the new resistor, 1.49K. Close enough to 50K to work just fine. Okay, there's our new resistor in place. Now let's apply power and see what happens. Well, that sounds better. Okay, let's kill some interference producing devices here. Okay, we're working, but we're not working as good as we should be working. Hear all that squealing between stations? 
Probably due to a bad uh, electrolytic capacitor. Well, I think I got it. It was a bad 10 microfarad capacitor. No squealing this time. Here's the capacitor. A Tosin, I guess that's how you pronounce the brand, Japanese, supposed to be 10 microfarad. We're only reading 0.1 microfarad, so yeah, that's an open capacitor. Here's the capacitor on the schematic. Looks like in the AVC circuit. Have our six volts going into the plus side. The other side connects to this diode. It appears to be a Appears to be a clamper diode to prevent overloading in the AVC circuit. So yeah, that can definitely cause squealing like what we were experiencing. We have to live sick okay, it's a anymore. new day and we're back on the radio. Just recapping what we've done so far. This 1500-ohm resistor in the converter circuit was reading over 9,000 ohms. Of course, after I heated it with a soldering iron, it dropped down to about 5,000, but that was keeping the oscillator from working, effectively killing the radio. After we replaced that, we had reception, but we had a lot of squealing and oscillation. This 10 microfarad capacitor in the AVC circuit was open. After that, that took care of the squealing, but radio still wasn't as perky as it could be, and that brings us up to where we are right now. I replaced these other capacitors, which were not open, but they read a great deal higher than they should have, and then these three resistors were also fairly high up in value. There's still some more resistors in here that are up a little bit, but not bad enough that I'm going to replace them. Now, I will tell you that all of these resistors lowered back down in value once I heated them with a soldering iron, but you know, they're not going to stay like that, so might as well just go ahead and replace them. Okay, this 15K ohm resistor across the prime area of the audio output transformer had gone up. This 2.2K ohm resistor had gone up to about 3,000 ohms. It's in the B plus line to the IF amplifier stage. And this 1K ohm resistor had gone up also in the B plus line to the second IF transformer. So after I replaced those resistors and those capacitors, things got a little more perky. Here's the 2.2K ohm resistor reading 2.9K. It was right at 3K before the uh, soldering iron heating incident. Here's the 1K resistor reading double what it should. Here's the 1.5K resistor that was killing the oscillator. I've already shown it to you, but here it is again. 5.8K. It was reading about around 9K, I believe, before we heated it up with a soldering iron. Here's the 15K. We'll just go ahead and round it up to 20,000 ohms with its reading. And once again, it was reading a little higher before we uh, removed it with a soldering iron. And capacitor number one is supposed to be 10 microfarad, reading 20. Yeah, that's not too bad, but you know, the other one of the same brand had opened up completely, so there's no reason to leave that one in there, too. And here's the open AVC cap that was causing the squealing. Here's a 3.3 microfarad that's reading double. Okay, here's one that's really up there. This is supposed to be a hundred microfarad. It's reading 376 microfarad. Here's another hundred microfarad. Not as bad as the last one. It's only reading 244 microfarad. 
And here's the electrolytic filter capacitor, 50 microfarad, 150 volts. It's reading 77 microfarad. It could probably actually stay, but while well, I had it apart, might as well go ahead and change it. Okay, I think we've about done all we can do. I found one more resistor here that kind of threw me for a loop. The color bands appear to be brown, gray, brown, which would be, which would be I believe, 190 ohm, but actually I think that's an orange, gray, orange. Which would be 39,000 ohms. I found this other resistor that goes from the base of the converter transistor to B+. It's supposed to be 39K ohm. Although those bands do look brown to me. We're actually reading 55,000 ohms, so I went ahead and replaced that. Okay, we're back together and seem to be working normally again. Hello, I'm Bo Harala with Bo Harala Autoplex in Meridian, Mississippi. With our head, we'll also have more with our guest, Dr. Rashini Raj. She's a... Bye. Columbia University College of Meridian. Call 601-482-7539 or go to bohautoplex.com. This is your music. This is your station. The legendary 1290 WNBM Meridian. Big time oldies and blazing blues. Be sure to catch the Barry and Gardner Funeral Home Report 9 a.m. to 9.30 Sunday mornings on WNBN. This is your music. This is your station. The legendary 1290 WNBM Meridian. Big time oldies and blazing blues. The music that brings back memories. Starving game. Cool in the gang. Sensation. This is your music. Classic. This is Gladys Knight. This is your station. I'm Eddie LaVert. I'm Eric Nolan Grant. And I'm Walter Williams. And we're the OJs. The legendary 1290 WNBM Meridian. Big time oldies and blazing blues. This ain't your kids radio station. This is strictly for the grown folk. did they not I mean yeah I was abandoned by my mother really what year 1985 huh wow well I'd say that's working pretty good for a four transistor radio where'd you grow up oh, had to replace all of these goodies to get it at that point but me we obtained the desired results okay I think we still might have a problem concerning at least the lower end of the dial here's our radio that's the subject of this video. As you can hear, I'm not getting anything between 600 and 800. Okay, turn that off. And here is the identical solid state radio that we featured in an earlier video. Okay, it was already on. And as you can hear, the, the weak station at 670 is coming in on this radio. So I think we need to tear back into this one and see what's going on with it. For just a few clouds as we head through this evening and overnight tonight, it'll be warm headed to a low near 71 in town, dipping to the upper 60s outside the perimeter. Okay, I replaced the uh, converter transistor, and that might have solved our problem. We're now tuned to WSB out of Atlanta. Not coming in great, but better than it was before. I think that's WSM coming in faintly. We'll wait till it gets a little later and see what happens. Okay, 
did the IF line up with a little bit off. That's the reason it was distorted. Mainly this tremor. Here, let me find it. This tremor right here. We had to distort now. Especially towards religious there you go. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Okay, there we are on 650, coming in pretty good. So to recap, open resistor in the emitter circuit of the converter transistor was killing the radio. Uh, 10 microfarad cap in the AVC circuit was causing it to squeal once we got it to play. And then a faulty converter transistor was keeping it from picking up any stations below about 800 or so. And there. So there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later. They were trying to give aid to. Well, and it was Russian.